How you doing? Picked up this fat chorus pedal the other day. Cost next to nothing. Even brand new, these were cheap and on the second hand market, yeah, they're a bargain. It's a great sounding pedal. Uh, I know it's cheap, but it sounds great. It's a sort of pedal where you can kind of set the three knobs to just 12 o'clock and it's the sort of chorus, the chorus has been voiced where you can almost leave it on all the, all the time, you know? Yeah, it's a great sounding pedal, and of course you can crank the uh... You can also crank the uh, effect as well. A little while back, I made a video with this guy, the Fab Distortion from the same range, and in that video I uh, wrote the circuit out, I worked out what pedal it was copied from, and I ended up rehousing the effect board from that pedal in one of these um, lolly tins. I've got five of them, I, I found them on the nature strip, Some of, uh, one of my neighbours must have been throwing them out in the last council collection. And uh, I think it turned out really well. I think it looks really great. So I'm actually going to do the same sort of thing in this video with my Fab Chorus pedal. Even though it's a great sounding pedal, I'm not entirely convinced about the plastic enclosures and just the cheap parts really that they're made from. So I think that'll be really cool. I've already got started on this because I think if you saw that other video, you might remember that these tins are very, well, they're just tin and they're very, very thin tin. So I think mounting a stomp switch directly to the lid, it'll probably fall apart. So in that video, I used a piece of aluminum angle and some scrap timber and made up this sort of bracket to take the weight of stepping on that stomp switch. Uh, it was a little bit overly complex, to be honest. So in this box, I've actually simplified it and I've just used a disc of aluminum and I've actually reinforced the whole lid and I've glued and screwed this piece of scrap timber onto it. I got pretty lucky actually because the piece of aluminium I used was already cut to exactly the right size. I think it was originally a cap that held down a mains toroidal transformer in an old amp build and somehow it's found its way into my junk box. It even had a hole in exactly the right position where the stomp switch is going to go, which was handy because that's exactly how I held them together when I was gluing it. I measured and then drilled a hole where the stomp switch is going to go, or a pilot hole at least. Then I cut back a piece of scrap plywood as a clamping coil and then used a bolt with a couple of wing nuts on it to squeeze it together. And at the other end I just used a, a regular clamp. I did all that yesterday. The JB weld is all cured and hard and I'm ready to move on with that. I also had to be very careful to make the width of this piece of timber make it so that it exactly matches the depth of the box. That way it just meets up with the base of the box so that it spreads the load of stepping on the stomp switch. But it also gives me a place where I can put a couple of self tappers uh, to hold the enclosure together. I did that with the um, distortion pedal build as well. So I'm ready to move forward with that, drill a few more holes and so on. But I think first what I'm going to do is pull apart my cool fab chorus purpley blue sort of pedal and see what makes it tick. Well, like the distortion pedal, it's got two, two circuits in there, two circuit boards. This, I assume, is the buffer bypass board, and if I compare it to the one from my distortion pedal, it's clearly much newer, so they've obviously been updating these. This, is, this must be a newer pedal, a newer build anyway. It's much better part placement. It's a fiberglass board instead of phenolic, and it's, uh, it's just better all round. So that's promising. Looks to be much the same sort of buff, buffer bypass circuit, though. We've got a couple of chips here. This guy's well, one of these is a flip-flop and the other one's a multiplexer, so this is uh, what's giving us our buffering and or our bypass switching, I guess. The buffering, I assume, is from this dual op-amp here. This guy has got a, a, a transistor of some sort here and here, so uh, maybe it had simpler buffering. Um, I'm not entirely sure. 
The stop switch has been moved as well. Instead of the sort of beam and this really feeble looking stomp switch they've actually moved it onto a separate little mini board and your stomp button is actually pressing directly on that switch so it looks like they've improved that situation so let's get the effect board out and see how that looks oh, boy oh boy these are really tight these knobs <laughs> they weren't designed to come off in a hurry Oh, that one wasn't so bad. All right, we've got a dual op amp here at TLO72. We've got this big old chip, which is clearly the main part of the circuit. It's an ES56028S, or is that a five? I think it's an S on the end. Don't, I'm not familiar with this chip, but I reckon it's probably a surround sound audio chip. I'll look up the data sheet and we'll check it out. All right, so we've got an Echo Sound processor. <laughs> it's a bit of a worry when there's a spelling mistake in the actual title <laughs> of the data sheet, but that's all right. Uh, where are we? It's used for sing alone. I assume that's another mistake. It's probably sing along. Uh, in other words, karaoke, TV, surround processors. Um, yeah, surround sound uses a really short delay in some of the audio channels, I believe. This chip actually has two modes, echo mode and surround mode, and in surround mode you get better audio performance, less distortion, uh, but you're limited to shorter delay times. Uh, in fact, it'll work all the way down to 4.1 milliseconds. I think chorusing is normally in the range of 20 to 30 milliseconds, uh, so this chip may also be a good candidate for a flanger build as well, I would think if you're into that sort of uh, sound. Um, it looks to be very similar to the PT2399 chip. I did a video a while back where I bought a pre-made PT2399 module and turned it into a really basic delay pedal. Uh, and certainly back in the early 2000s, the PT2399 was a really popular choice for those sort of builds. And around that time I read about guys who were turning the PT2399 into chorus pedals. By modulating the delay time, I don't think it did it sort of gracefully. I think you had to sort of faff about with the circuit a bit, but this looks like it would be a simpler build because it's already designed for these short delay times in its surround mode. So yeah, interesting chip. So like I did with the distortion pedal, I think I want to just get rid of this whole buffer bypass board altogether and then just wire the effect on its own with uh, a true bypass stomp switch. But there's a couple of things to think about. Um, I have to think about how to mount the board. Uh, with this guy, I think I'll just replace these pots and use ones like that with a threaded bushing on them and just mount that to the lid because the board is actually, or at least the enclosure is deep enough for the full depth of the board. So that should be pretty easy. I also have to think about um, the input impedance of this circuit and whether I can just uh, run a jack straight to it. Most likely I'm gonna have to build a buffer for the front end of it, as I did with the distortion pedal, but I can test and I will test the input impedance of this. The other thing I noticed in the data sheet is that this chip is limited to six and a half volts. So luckily though, the voltage regulation is actually on this board, which is that guy there, 7550, it's a five volt reg. So uh, luckily I don't have to worry about that. It's all on this actual effect board. So that's cool. So I spent a bit of time testing this circuit in different ways, trying to get a, uh, a handle on how it all works. Without a schematic, you're kind of flying blind and really just trusting educated guesses and stuff. My original assumption that the effect was limited to this board and this board was solely doing buffering and bypassing uh, is pretty close, but I don't think it's 100%. And that's because it seems that there's a pre-emphasis and de-emphasis filtering going on. And I think the pre-emphasis filter is actually on this board and I suspect the de-emphasis is actually on this board. So I spent a bit of time reading up on pre-emphasis and de-emphasis filtering and sort of coming up with an idea for a preamp or a buffer preamp. And that's because 
the input impedance on this guy is only 30k, k ohm, so it'll, it would certainly need buffering if I was to just use this circuit. So with that in mind, I came up originally with this little buffer. Here's the pre-emphasis circuit here. It's very simple, just three parts. In a passive form like this, it's actually a base cut, and to turn it into a treble boost, you just whack a big bunch of gain after it. But uh, this is really not the best way to do it. So the next thing I came up with was this sort of arrangement with um, the filter as part of an inverting op amp. This is the same, well, it's the same topology. It's not quite the same circuit, but it's the same layout that you'll find in a CE2, the original chorus and flanger pedals that Boss designed. In fact, probably all the old bucket brigade devices have this sort of thing as a pre-emphasis and de-emphasis noise reduction. The advantage of using an inverting op amp is that you can have fractional gain. Having fractional gain up front means that you can just have a bit more headroom in here. But it also means that you've got to send it off to the board and then have a gain recovery on the end. Um, and really, I'm not even sure this is appropriate for this circuit until I do more testing and so on. And really, this is sort of getting beyond the scope of this project. It's getting far too complex. I can see myself basically redesigning essentially what I already have, which is frankly a little bit silly. So I've decided to just keep what's here. Uh, and basically house or try to house both of these circuits in this little board. That will be, honestly, that'll be challenge enough because this other board's actually quite big. Now, having said that, there is a couple of advantages to designing my own buffering and pre-emphasis filtering. And that would be, I think, if the pedal was particularly noisy and I'd be able to use much more high ends, sort of low noise, better audio, devices in the buffering. This pedal has a couple of TL072s on it, and uh, I, you know, those that's an op-amp I see that's used in lots of pedals, but probably more so because it's uh, cheap and easily available, and also because it's a low, or relatively low current draw, and pedals, well, classic pedals are, tr are traditionally uh, battery-operated devices. And uh, I'm not really worrying about battery snaps in most builds these days, so you can use high-end audio devices. Having said that, I mean, um, I don't think this is, well, I, I don't, it doesn't seem to be a particularly noisy device, um, but I haven't tried recording with it or putting it in an effects loop or with other pedals or anything. Um, but if it did become a problem, then it would be easy enough just to change the op-amps on this particular board. So I guess the other advantage of uh, designing my own buffer is that it would be very easy to wire it as a true bypass pedal. Um, but even that, um, I mean, if I really had to wire this uh, as true bypass, I'd have to work out uh, a way of sort of defeating the flip-flop circuit here so that it's permanently on um, and then just wiring around it. But to be honest, the plan with these lolly tins is to get all five of them and make five different pedals and then uh, eventually put together a little pedal board with just my five rusty old lolly tins. I think that'd look really cool. And um, they won't all be uh, rehoused commercial effects. So I've got a few of my own designs that I'd like to try in these builds. But it really doesn't hurt to have at least one of your pedals uh, with a buffer in it when it's in bypass. And that's because if all of your pedals are true bypass, then when they're all bypassed, your guitar has to drive two guitar cables, and that can sort of kill your tone when you're playing direct or clean or, or just using the amp drive. Um, so it doesn't hurt to have a, at least one buffer in your signal chain. So I think it'll be absolutely fine if I just rehouse this pedal as is, because uh, I can always mod it further later on. So now I've got to work out how to fit all of this into this enclosure. I think uh, oh, and that wire's broken too. <laughs> I better repair that. That's pretty common actually when you're playing around with pedals. It's one thing to look out for actually when you take moving pedals around is uh, wires that snap like that. Um, this guy's going to be okay because it's uh, thinner than the depth of the pedal, so I can just mount that on some new pots. This guy is going to be difficult, and that's because it's actually wider than the depth of the enclosure. So I think I'll have no choice but to cut a sliver 
off one side of the board which seems pretty extreme and I will cut through uh, this track here and this track but this track is actually just a battery snap and I'm getting rid of that anyway and this tracks actually the 9 volts from the DC jack which again I'm relocating so it is pretty drastic but it, it shouldn't be a, a major issue So I think I have a plan. I'm going to mount this main effect board via the pots around about here and that will leave enough room for the jacks which will sort of go over the, well actually underneath the pots and those two will go on a diagonal. This board has to be about whatever that is, about five or six millimeters or six or seven millimeters from this piece of timber to allow enough room for the jacks which means I've got little choice but to mount the buffer bypass board on the other side of this and if I get it over that way uh, my stomp switch will clear this five-way connector the trouble is this board is 37 millimeters and this buffer bypass board is over 40 mil so I've actually it was a bit tedious but I've actually relocated the parts that were near the edge there, these caps and the diode. Uh, luckily when I removed the jacks and the DC jack there was a couple of earth solder pads vacant and uh, so now I can actually trim this right through here and I'll be left with a board that's only 35 millimeters so it's just going to fit. I'm going to have to trim one end off as well. Okay I've done some stuff First thing I've done is to trim back this buffer bypass board. I've also finalized the wiring, so that's all ready to go. I did test fit that on the back of this piece of timber here. I uh, drilled a couple of holes to mount it, and I'll use these little stainless steel self-tappers. These are actually the screws I use for mounting machine heads. And I found a couple of these tiny little plastic tubes and I've just cut them to the right length. So they'll work as standoffs for the board. I did have to oval this hole ever so slightly for the stomp switch just to, just to give it another millimeter or so of clearance. So I'll mount that in this direction. The other thing I've done, I've actually had to lengthen this five-way cable that joins the two boards because it has to kind of reach around the piece of timber to plug into the other board. Yeah, it was a bit tedious, but that's done now. I've also added some lengths of hookup wire onto my pots so they're all ready to wire up to the main effect board. As for the knobs, I actually found a set of these uh, sort of maroon, shiny plastic knobs in my junk box and originally I was just using them to get the spacing and positioning to look right but the more I messed around with it the more I thought you know I'm going to give them a try although they are a little bit too shiny so what I ended up doing I've actually labeled them on the top and then I've actually used a coat or two of semi-gloss and that's kind of dulled them back and they sort of look a bit more the part I'm still not entirely convinced but uh, knobs are easy enough to change if they kind of bug me and as you can see, I've also drilled the pots and the LED in the top and the jacks in the lower half of the enclosure. Then I went ahead and labelled the jacks with some dry press lettering and sealed that up with a couple of coats of semi-gloss Duramax. So the enclosure's ready to go and all my other bits and pieces are ready to go. So I'm going to get on and wire this up and see if it still works. Well that seems to work as it should. It's a bit of a relief to be honest when you 
pull apart something to that extent and test it and mess around with it and rewire it and cut bits off circuit boards, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a relief that it all fires up just as it should for the first time. Really does sound great. This pedal is a really great sounding pedal regardless of the price. But now I've got one with switchcraft jacks, heavy duty stomp switch, and I think it looks really cool as well. I really love, you know, repurposed, patinated sort of objects like that. I've got a chorus and a distortion. Um, I've got three more of these boxes. I'm thinking maybe a tremolo for one, a delay for another. For the fifth one, well, I really haven't decided. So do let me know in the comments if you were limited to just five pedals or five effects on a, on a single pedal board, let me know which five you choose. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please do uh, like and subscribe and hit the bell as well. I do appreciate it. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.